Good evening and welcome to the happenings in Medfield. As you may be aware, and I'm quite sure you are, we have the opportunity of sitting with the selectmen to discuss the happenings in Medfield with the press. And I'm quite sure all of you have read the Hometown Weekly and the editorials by Josh Perry as he is a chief editor. So he is sitting and we're going to start with Richard DeSoria, happenings in Menfield, and exactly what he and Josh Perry, both of them, are up to. And so I'm gonna turn this over once again to town historian, the selectman, Richard DeSoria. Gentlemen, good to see you. Nice to see you, Jack, thanks. For thanks. Us on. So, where shall we start? Well, I, I listed a number of things uh, that are going on. Probably, uh, again, uh, the biggest thing is the former Midfield State Hospital. Uh, just to update you, uh, as you know, uh, it passed uh, both uh, town meeting and uh, vote of the public by overwhelming numbers, and now is in the lap of our state legislature. Just to update you, it has been given uh, a bill number. Uh, it has gone to committee. We've had at least one hearing um, so it is progressing. Uh, I get a little nervous sometimes when anything goes into, uh, into the State House. Uh, as you know, uh, everything has to be through the House and the Senate and on the governor's desk uh, by the end of July. And it makes me nervous sometimes uh, uh, that it's going to progress, but uh, both um, uh, Representative uh, Garlick, Representative Dooley, and Senator Timothy uh, have said there's no opposition, it will go through, it's just a question of, you know, going through the hearing process. So uh, they keep relaying to us that uh, it will indeed uh, go through. We're in constant touch with them. Um, I know John Harney uh, of the uh, hospital committee is almost on a daily basis uh, in touch with our reps, so, uh, as well as uh, Mike and Christine at Town Hall. So um, hopefully everything is going going through uh, as far as that's concerned. Do you, so, do you foresee any foresee any issues? Is there anything that has come up that could cause a problem at the uh, No, the, um, the, um, the, the only fear, again, and the reason that has to be uh, by the end of, of July is because then it's an election season, the House right. goes on recess, and then we're gonna have a new governor, whole new administration, and the fear is, I mean, this, if you look at it, you know, for 139 acres of land at $3.1 million is an incredible deal. And if you get a new administration that comes in in January, they may say, well, is this an incredible deal for the state? You know, where right. is Medfield? Uh, and suddenly, all that we've done is back on the back burner, and then right. we lose control, and then the state does what, what they want. And uh, quite frankly, uh, probably many in the state do not even know where Midfield is, <laughs> and if they can make money, um, they're going to do it at right. our expense. So um, we we constantly being told there's nothing that has come up that you know uh, is a bump in the road. It's just mm -hmm. a question of because um, with the, with the uh, House of Representatives, April was basically all budget items, right. and now it's in with the Senate, so that's the priority. And so now, once it gets, the Senate finishes their budget, which basically they've done, so now we have a little bit left in May and then June and July um, to get this item through the House, into the Senate, mm -hmm. and onto the governor's desk. So what we're doing now then, anticipation that everything's gonna be okay, the job of the selectmen are gonna have to be to appoint a development committee, a new committee mm -hmm. Uh, the other committee um, really did an incredible job. That was chaired by uh, Steve Nolan. Um, and, and the work they did and the time they did uh, and the negotiating committees that we had, uh, it's unbelievable the amount of time that they spent getting us to this point. So now it's gonna be a different uh, set of cars because now that we have the land, how are we gonna develop it? What's gonna go up there? Um, when, what's going to take place, what's the condition of the building. So now we have a new committee. So this becomes, I think, very, very important again. And probably the first thing we need to do is to set some goals. What exactly are we looking for? And then once we determine that, um, 
what are the skills we need to serve on that committee to develop it? Right. And we discussed at the selectmen's meeting last night, we've put a call out if there's individuals in town that are interested to send in uh, a letter of interest. But also, and you'll see this on the state level and the federal level, something this important, I think it's up to the selectmen to, once we figure what our goals are, who is in the community that we can go to that maybe might not send something in, but if we approach them and say, look, you know, you've served the town well, you have the skills we need, would you be willing to serve the town and, you know, and be on this committee? So what we're doing now is trying to brainstorm and look at the different individuals throughout town, try to figure what our goals are, and then put together what we think is the best possible committee to develop, um, you know, to develop uh, the, the hospital property. And as you know, back um, in, the, in the winter, we had a, a vision session. We opened up to the community, and we heard a lot of information of what people want up there. And clearly, number one that came across was some type of senior housing, over 55 housing. Uh, there's none of that in Medfield right now. You and I have discussed in the past that uh, we're losing a lot of good citizens in Medfield because they're downsizing or economically they can't afford the home they're in. They want to stay in Midfield. Uh, they like Midfield, um, but there's no place for them to go. And we're losing many over to Norfolk and Millis and other communities, yet you still see them here in Midfield. Uh, they're going to church here. They're you know, taking part in town government. Uh, they're shopping here. They're still Midfield residents, but they're living you know, over in Norfolk. So, uh, I think that probably will be one of our priorities. We also have the issue of, um, of 40B. Mm -hmm. um, our understanding is that um, Gatehouse, which is to put 92 units onto West Street, did indeed get their financing and we're told anytime soon now they're going to begin developing. Um, but that still will put us below that 10% window that um, until we get to that, developers can bypass midfield zoning. So we have to look what will go up the hospital uh, on the area of um, affordable housing. Um, I talked to one uh, senior citizen that uh, has just put uh, her home up on the market, uh, and she can't afford, you know, the, the, the uh, another home here in midfield. Uh, and and you know, what am I going to do? I want to stay here in town. So. What type of affordable housing can we have up there? What type of over 55 housing? And then there were strong uh, concerns for open space. I'll talk in a second, the, uh, the survey that just came out uh, by the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Um, and can we get something for tax relief? Is there, you know, is there corporations or industry um, like an uh, electric time or something that is a good clean industry that can go up there that will be, you know, for tax reasons, would be very beneficial for Midfield. So, yeah, it's we've we've reached one milestone uh, by purchasing the the hospital. We're waiting for the second to actually get it from the state, and the third is to get this committee underway, which we hope to do before summer begins, and actually begin to look at the development of the hospital. Uh, in addition to the the selectmen, who else has been, um, you know, involved? Um, in these preliminary discussions about, you know, what could go on um, with the land and, and the committee and, um, you know, has there been other groups in addition to the selectmen that have been involved in these discussions? Or is it <clears throat> well, of course, the committees in the past that the selectmen have appointed that, that, sure. that got us to this point, that worked on the State Hospital mm -hmm. um, Redevelopment Committee, this, uh, the Negotiating Committee, earlier than that, the whole issue with the environmental issues that were down there. So all those committees uh, still have input. In fact, at our, our next selectmen's meeting, the uh, State Hospital um, Review Redevelopment Committee is going to come back again uh, for kind of their final time to advise us and we'll tap into their knowledge uh, of, of where we think uh, we should be going. Mm -hmm. uh, the planning board, uh, because the, of the nature of, the, of, of their job, uh, has been and should continue uh, to play a role uh, as town planners. Uh, our town planner, Sarah Raposa, has also played an active role. Um, she uh, has gone out to a number of different uh, 
um, committees outside of the town is, is looking for some grants as a, a grant now to see how we can use the chapel that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of the buildings that probably everybody feels we should hold on to um, how that can best be used so we actually have a grant to look at at yeah. that we had the um, architecture class at Wentworth Institute yeah. um, that also his students uh, developed uh, they were given four different uh, venues to to develop the uh, hospital especially the chapel so I mean we've gotten some feedback there but mm -hmm. um, this new committee is going to be the one that's really going to, um, you know, run with it. Sure. The uh, question that I have for you, Richard, is the new town garage. Um, I actually took a tour of that yesterday. I attended the. Um, uh, they have weekly meetings. They've been we meeting uh, weekly, uh, and I actually sat in on on the meeting uh, yesterday morning, and then had a tour through the mm -hmm. facility. Uh, it looks beautiful. Um, they're on schedule. Um, they had a slight issue with um, underground water that they didn't know about <laughs> that they had to um, put some extra cement and, and deal with that. That set them back about two weeks. But they're sk still scheduled, they're on schedule to have that completed by the end of August. Um, and it's, the work is progressing. They had a very difficult winter as you know, yeah, very well. Yeah, um, you know, to work up there because of the the cold uh, temperatures and and the snow, uh, but they're uh, working hard. Um, um, Ken Feeney, uh, our DPW director, is is at there every meeting. Um, um, Shane Nolan, uh, who is the uh, manager in charge, uh, does I think a, an incredible job. Um, so that's progressing. Uh, we're we're on schedule with that, uh, so we should see that uh, completed by the end of August. Second question, which people have asked me about. The new building for the fire and police. Um, that too is progressing. Um, what you will probably see, as you know, at the last town meeting, uh, they received the amount of money to continue with the final uh, design and plan of the building. Uh, they will be holding some public hearings so people in the town can can see uh, what that what that final uh, design looks like, and we will probably see uh, in the fall a special town meeting called to actually get the uh, the funds to um, to actually appropriate the funds to actually begin construction of that building. So we will come back to the town uh, the town people townspeople uh, at a special town meeting. They'll be able to finalize the costs. Uh, we're hearing um, in the neighborhood of about 19 million for the cost, but that's not finalized yet. Um, and we'll be able to, between now and the town meeting, uh, have some more um, public uh, sessions so people can actually get inside police and fire stations to see the condition of the existing buildings. Uh, the fire station dates back to 1962. Uh, the um, police station in the early mid 1970s, uh, and there's a lot of issues uh, with that. Uh, that hopefully they'll get out so the townspeople can see what the condition is, and then make the decision: Is this where we want to go with the, this new facility? I understand that if everything goes, that the uh, fire unit. Chief Kingsbury will be moving down to the, uh, where they will move their equipment and everything down to the town garage. Chief of Police, Chief Meany, and, the, and the, will be moving out to where Kingsbury. Ice House Road. Right, on Ice House Road, which brings up a point. Right across from the uh, Council on the Aging is a large piece of property. What are you going to do with it? Well, that's it's known as, uh, as Lot 3, and at the last town meeting, uh, the voters uh, of Medfield um, approved the article to allow the selectmen to actually uh, go out with an RFP, go out and actually uh, solicit um, a developer for that piece of property. Right. And uh, there is already uh, a local uh, developer, Mr. Borelli, uh, that has come up with a proposal 
uh, to put a, uh, what I refer to as a four kicks facility, right. similar to what's over in Norfolk that would have uh, indoor lacrosse, soccer facilities, basketball, um, that type of uh, a facility. Uh, he advertised uh, in, he um, yeah. uh, in Hometown Weekly and others of what that facility would look like. Um, that may or may not come out, and I'm sure he will uh, be interested in, uh, in submitting a proposal um, to have him uh, lease that property mm -hmm. as the Kingsbury Club was done for a 99-year lease. Um, there was a lot of favorable response to that particular one, but something else might come in. So I know there was some confusion because of the advertising. I, I was going to say, I thought that was a key point at the, at the town meeting that somebody made, is that the vote wasn't actually for um, this facility. It was just to give the Board of Selectmen the opportunity to go out and, and seek somebody to, to use the land. Because I think a lot of people, obviously that was right. sort of the controversial <laughs> uh, topic at this year's uh, town meeting, because you could tell as soon as it was over, everybody sort of you know, made their way out. But, um, I thought that was a key point that somebody made, that you're not actually voting for that property. That's not the deal that's in place. That's just a suggestion that somebody in right. town has had. And obviously last year's town meeting, somebody had su suggested trying to use that land for, for recreation as well. So, um, but I thought, well, that was, I thought that was a key point at the, at the meeting. It was, and there was some confusion because people thought, mm -hmm. oh, if we vote yes on this, we're gonna get this facility. Right. That may come about, mm -hmm. but as you correctly said, uh, it allows the selectmen to um, go out and see who's interested. And part of that is, uh, which I've been talking about for a long time, uh, for tax relief uh, in the town of Midfield. As you know, 90 whatever percent of Midfield is, is residential. We have very little um, industry in Midfield, so the tax burden falls on the property owner here in Midfield. And I think we have to do a better job of trying to find ways to give property uh, tax relief to to the, the homeowners here in Midfield, unlike, uh, as I've said before, a Westwood or a Hawkington that has a 128 or 495. We don't have that here in Midfield, so we have to get creative. And this is just my own opinion, not necessarily that of the board, but here's a way if we can, uh, be it Mr. Varelli's facility or another type of facility, mm -hmm. uh, we can get lease revenue, we can get tax revenue, and that's going to help the taxpayers of Midfield. At the same time, it's important to make sure that there are some abutters uh, in, the, uh, in, in that area mm -hmm. off of uh, Copperwood, you know, that live there. And there's also, um, it, you know, West Mill Street is a fairly uh, narrow street. Uh, we have to consider traffic issues and others. Right. Um, Mr. Burley's plan is a very large plan. When we do the RFP, um, do we restrict the size of that uh, because of the neighborhood, because of traffic? Mm -hmm. um, but I think the uh, Economic Development Committee clearly, I believe it was a unanimous vote that they had, wanted uh, some type of a facility um, to, like Mr. Borelli's that would go in sure. there, be it his or be it another one. So um, that's, um, that's on the agenda. I know Selectman Peterson has talked about uh, housing in that area. Uh, yeah. because he feels that if you have the type of housing that is uh, or, or that are for seniors or uh, perhaps not um, school-age children then it can be a benefit as well because you're not going to have you know additional teachers and school buildings have to be built you know so that's being looked about but all that kind of ties back to one of the goals um, the selectmen have been talking about and I've been talking about and that is some sort of a master plan and in that master plan, we need to look at, not only is there lot three that's right there, but right next to it that runs from lot three bordering the center and running out to Harding Street is a, a chunk of uh, land that the town bought a number of years ago, the so-called Hinckley property. Mm -hmm. So that's also available there. So I think we need to look at the hospital property. We need to look at lot three. We need to look at the Hinckley property and other property that, that throughout the town and with a, a, a master plan, I think we can do that. The, um, and I'll get to uh, in a second, the uh, open space and recreation did uh, a master plan. They made a great map and they color coded it to show where 
uh, town-owned property is, conservation-owned property, trustees of reservation property. And you can look, once you, once you see that, and now you look, okay, what are the recreation needs we have? Okay, here's the different properties. You know, this would be good here. This part of town doesn't seem to have playgrounds, and maybe we need one down here. Right. If we do a similar thing with, uh, with the housing issue, and what property is available so we don't have all um, you know, uh, affordable housing in just one area. You know, are there other areas? What would be best? Uh, what's best for the neighborhoods? What's best for the town? So clearly, I think we're going to look at not just the hospital, not just Lot 3, the Hinckley property, but other properties in town. Because in addition to the public safety bill, I mean, I know <coughs> at one of the uh, meetings that I attended when they were this is early on when they were discussing the plans for the possibility of bringing in a new uh, public safety facility. One of the things that was brought up is also the FAP Center, Dale Street School. So there's there are other, you know, there are other factors that are um, tied into this because it's what are you, what are you going to do with those buildings? You know, the needs of the community um, in terms of those uh, those facilities as well. So I mean, it seems like there's a lot of different projects that are going on right now that all have to sort of be uh, accounted for. So I think you know, as you were talking about trying to come up with a master plan, you know, I think it actually would encompass a lot of different regions in the town as well. Absolutely, and, and the Dale Street School and the FAT Center uh, are true that um, the building committee, when they looked at, the first they looked at the garage, mm -hmm. then they talked about the uh, police fire safety building, then they talked about FAT Center, and the Dale Street School, which is a 1942 school, needs a lot of up updating. And there was some talk of, you know, would you add on to that? Then all of a sudden, you have all kinds of issues because of new building codes and other things. Would it actually be cheaper to build a new school than to renovate that? And my idea I'll throw out is there, because there's only two grades uh, in the Dale Street School, right. is there a way, would it be more beneficial for the town? You know, could you have one grade go to Memorial, another grade go to Wheelock? Could you maybe add on a little and make room uh, and therefore uh, eliminate the need of, of, uh, of the Dale Street School as a, as a public school? Um, you'd save money because then you wouldn't need principals and librarians and, and other things that you would need if you had a two-grade school. Mm -hmm. That might not be feasible. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just trying to think of how can we you know, meet the educational needs of, of Medfield and also um, be aware of the needs of the, of the taxpayers uh, in the town as well. And then Park and Recreation is looking you know, for their, their needs. And mm -hmm. the FAST Center, again, is a 1927 building right. you know, that really doesn't uh, have the room and the space to meet the recreation needs that Park and Recreation has looked at. Is there something you can do with the Dale Street School, tie in the two? Would that be meet the needs and, and be less um, uh, financial burden? Or and is it better to have a new uh, facility perhaps up on the on the land that we have the so-called sledding hill uh, area up by the up by the hospital all that will come in with a master plan right. so you're not just doing one thing and then oh wait a minute here's another thing and mm -hmm. uh, so it just makes sense to develop you know a master plan for the town mm -hmm. for the housing for the recreation uh, as well as um, open space and things like that that's interesting you know you mentioned earlier about park and rec uh, What's that situation coming about? Well, Park and Recreation, and, and let me just get into for a second because this, yeah. uh, we just uh, we, were given this survey uh, last night and, and it's a, a ton of data. Uh, and I haven't had uh, time to digest all of it, but I just was real impressed. Um, first of all, they put out a survey that went to six, 683 people responded, which is a good amount of people. Oh, yeah. And they have a whole breakdown of, of the, um, of the the, the type of people that responded, uh, everything from ages to family size. And so it was a pretty good survey if you look at, you know, results. Um, but there were a couple of things that I highlighted that uh, I, I, I thought was very impressive. And they looked at, you know, how often to use midfield open space and recreational facilities, you know, and they were listed down. And, um, and there's a whole chart that outlines all the different facilities in Medfield from things like Noon Hill to privately owned Trustees Rocky Woods to the Hinkley uh, Swim uh, Pond Park area to, um, you know, the tennis courts, uh, other areas. So, you know, they had a great uh, survey, but 
couple of things I just wanted to mention um, real quick uh, that, that stood out. One, uh, it came across um, that uh, almost 60 percent had concerns about the swimming facilities. Uh, we use the Hinkley Swim Pond, um, you know, to look at uh, is there something more uh, does that meet the needs of the town? Um, but there was a lot of positive things that came out. Eighty percent of those who responded felt that our open field space uh, was adequate, uh, was good here. Uh, children's playground facilities, um, seventy percent thought it was adequate. You had another twenty-three percent thought repairs were needed. Um, Eighty-four percent of the town thought we had good facilities for hiking and walking. Um, you know, that type of facilities. Um, and uh, areas of which I thought uh, they were asked, how important is it for you to preserve the following? And one were buildings of historical or architectural value. And you had uh, um, 76, 77 percent of the town thought that was very important, you know, to preserve our, our historic buildings. Um, 69, over 92 percent thought that it was important to have open space to meet our water and conservation needs. Uh, you had uh, 80, over 86 percent thought it was important to keep our trails and open space linked, that you could, you could tie the town together. Um, and then um, what I, I, I thought was very good for the, the selectmen, town officials, Warren Committee and others to hear they were asked, what steps should the town take to accomplish these changes? And you had 75 percent thought that we should reserve additional funds in order to acquire undeveloped land uh, and conservation restrictions. Now, Medfield in the past used to set aside $50,000 a year um, to build a fund so that if land came up, the town could buy that. But because of the economy over the past you know, seven, eight years, we've actually reduced that just down to five thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Yet you have seventy five percent of the people saying that's real important to us to be able to set aside funds for that. Um, eighty three percent said that if you reserved additional funds in order to develop and improve recreational facilities, they'd be willing to pay more. Um, seventy three percent thought the town should approve the Community Preservation Act. Um, about eight or nine years ago that was, de that was defeated here. And that also ties in what I feel is a way we have to get creative to save taxpayers' money. Right now, Medfield, for example, the land we bought at the um, Redgate Farm down on uh, Phillip and, uh, and Foundry Street area, now we paid for that, you mm -hmm. know, all of that. Yet Medfield, every time because of the, um, uh, the land deeds and stuff, um, the money that's set aside that goes to the fund that the state pays for, um, we're not getting any of that money back. So Needham, for example, and the other towns that have accepted the Community Preservation Act, they're putting up a percent and then the state is giving them matching funds. So Medfield is helping out Needham, Medfield is helping out um, other uh, surrounding towns, yet when Medfield is buying open space, we're footing the entire amount ourselves. We could save ourselves and save the taxpayers some money by, if we belong to the Community Preservation Act, by getting some of the state funds. And you have 74 percent that took this survey felt that we need to approve the Community Preservation Act. So maybe that's something we need to bring up back at town meeting again. Um, and let me just end with, uh, with this survey, because they made a set of recommendations, which I thought was, was interesting. And they, one, they said we, we should develop, based on the survey, a new swim facility. They said we should acquire state hospital property, which we've done, so we've, we've, we've done that. Uh, I feel strong on this. Uh, they said we should develop maps and signs and online information so people know where, where are the open space uh, facilities in town, where are the recreational facilities, where are the trails. We have a lot of open space in Medfield. A lot of that is owned by the federal government, Rocky Woods and others, but if we had one map that listed everything, this right. master plan, so someone could get this and say, oh, here's these trails. I've talked to people that don't even realize we own a lot of these different pieces of property. As somebody who's not a, a resident as well, I mean, that would be something that would be helpful for people in other towns as well, because, you know, you draw people in who want to 
um, spend a day at Rocky Woods or something like that, or, or a town property. You know, now they they go eat at the restaurants in town, things like that. Absolutely, you know, this so is key. After they go to Rocky Woods or others, they stop and they eat at the uh, the sub shops or they right. eat at the facilities here in Midfield, and that's helping our local business, and that's going to bring more business in into town as well. Um, they talked about constructing multi-use indoor recreational facilities. They talked about camping sites. To me, Rocky Woods would be a great facility if we could work with the trustees, limited camping sites, you know, let uh, uh, the mom and dad, a couple of kids overnight go up and camp. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what a great idea. And also they recommend to expand uh, children's playground. So um, they've done a tremendous job uh, with this survey. So, uh, and, and I think this is going to be very valuable to mm -hmm. us. And, and the members of that committee, uh, I, I salute them uh, uh, because they put a lot of time and effort into that. And the data that we have uh, will be able to help us. Beautiful. I have been asked more than once, and so I'm going to throw it back to you, about the development of the water tower. Um, the, that's it, we're in good shape. Uh, that's been finalized. <coughs> uh, it's been through the House, through the Senate, and signed by the governor. It's now the property of the town of Midfield. So we now have that land. Uh, we're now underway at the last town meeting. Uh, again, the voters appropriated uh, over six million dollars. Um, we have a design, and we're underway now. The uh, Water and Sewerage Board um, uh, are underway to begin that process. We're looking, we hope, sometime in uh, 2015, uh, we're hoping the latest 2016, but probably 2015, to have that water tower <coughs> up and running. Uh, we're in a serious condition uh, without that. We just have the one water tower on Mount Nebo. Which is true. Yeah. Um, if anything happened to that, uh, it would be boiling water here in the town of Midfield. Now, we've kept water in that, it's the, uh, up at the State Hospital Tower. In the event of any major fire in town, we still would have that, but it's not for drinking mm -hmm. um, usage. Uh, the water tower will be uh, located slightly uh, to, the, uh, to the north of the existing tower. Uh, there'll be an access road to come in. So that's underway. The land's ours. Uh, we're underway uh, with that, uh, and we hope by 2016 to, to have that up and running. The other part of that is our well number six, which is the well that most of the town of Medfield gets their drinking water from. Right now, we're running pipes all the way up 27, down West Mill, around back into Harding, and it's putting a tremendous strain on the pumps and probably is causing uh, a fair amount of water leakage. We, Medfield, we actually have a high amount of unaccounted for water, so we know we're getting leakage. They're working very hard to try to find where that is. Uh, we believe a lot of that is because the water has to be pumped up and around. Town meeting also voted funds to run the pipes from the new water tower right, right to the well number six, and that will alleviate all that strain on the pump and be able to take the shortcut right to it. So uh, that's we're good progress with that. Another question relative to, and we talked earlier about it, was now the construction and everything from Lord's has changed. Um, as you know, that's going to become, uh, Roach Brothers has that. It would be called Brothers Marketplace. Uh, they're underway. There's all kinds of construction going on right now. Uh, they're digging the parking lot up. Route 109 is being dug up. Um, Roach Brothers very generously gave to Midfield some $30,000 to help us uh, put a new sidewalk. The Aesthetics and Sidewalk Committee has recommended um, a, a design that would have uh, some brick and some cement. It would very much resemble uh, Pound Street, so that from the curbing in, you'll have some brick, and then there would be uh, the cement. And that's going to run from the parking lot around to the library property. And as you know, because it's very obvious, the uh, five trees that were there uh, were taken down on the advice of uh, the tree warden and uh, the Ken Feeney in the Department of uh, Public Works. Um, the trees had about uh, seven to ten years' life, uh, we were told, uh, but they were beginning to buckle the sidewalks. And they said if you put in an all-new sidewalk in, seven years later to redig it up doesn't make sense. 
And so the decision was made to take those trees down, but new trees will be planted mm -hmm. uh, in those spots. There'll be tree grates that will be put there. Um, and so uh, right now we're uh, at, at this meeting, we're on the, what's today, the 21st? Yes. 21st of May, uh, by the end of the month, uh, beginning of June, our DPW uh, and the sidewalk should be constructed. Um, Roach Brothers was a little bit behind schedule because they had some issues tying into the sewer and water issues uh, that they ran into, which held up our DPW to get the sidewalk in. Uh, but they're still progressing. You're going to see all kinds of work um, throughout May, the month of June, the month of July, and they're hoping by the end of the summer to actually have that ready to be open. And I know there's a lot of people in town that are very anxious. They are extremely so. Uh, but that's especially that's the library unscheduled. because of parking and so forth. You, well, you have an issue while construction right now, uh, as they're doing the water and sewer, it's very difficult to get into that. Right, back yeah, that's what it's told me. Uh, and and we realize that they're going as fast as they can. They're going to redo the entire parking lot. That will all be paved. There will be landscape, uh, colonial lighting that will be put in there. Um, but they are progressing. Obviously, parking on the streets and a little bit of an issue as well. Anybody <laughs> trying to drive down there? And well, it, very, our very office true. has our office is more or less across the street. So I, yeah, every morning that's well, very, it, very. It, true. It, it's hard, and, and I want to apologize to uh, both uh, Casa Bella uh, and also to the Medfield Barbershop. Um, Medfield Maybe. last year, the selectmen adopted a policy known as the um, Good Neighbor Policy, and, and we sent letters to all the departments under our control, uh, but also. Uh, elected uh, boards such as the school committee and park and rec um, saying that if any type of major construction is going to happen in that area that notice go out in advance to the people that live there either by um, signage or actual flyers that will be sent in the mail or, or, or let there um, and the aesthetics and, and um, sidewalk committee did notify the owner of, uh, of the building that um, Casabella Pizza, the jewelry store in Medfield Barbershop is in, uh, and actually had conversation with the owner of the jewelers. But then this project has been on and off. Um, it was getting our DPW on board with that. Then it was deciding whether it would be all brick, some brick, and then we didn't have enough funds, and then Roach Brothers. So um, because it was on and off and being delayed, they never actually got over to speak to uh, personally Casabella and and the uh, Medfield Barbershop, even though the owner of the building had been notified. And when construction began, I know it's hard because they've lost business. It's very hard because the sidewalk's being dug up. Um, so we're working as fast as we can. DPW has since met with, um, with the two uh, particular owners and given them a time schedule so they'll know. But it's difficult. But I just want the public to know those buildings, those businesses are open. Um, Kevin Robertson, the, uh, who's the police officer, uh, went out of his way to actually uh, escort people in uh, to get them into the businesses. And we did lay down, uh, because in the event of, of heavy rain, the dirt could turn to mud, uh, which was a suggestion by um, Medfield Barbershop. Could we put down plywood? So we did. We went in, we put yep. plywood <coughs> down there uh, so people can get in. So. Uh, we apologize. It's going to take some time. They're moving as fast as they can, but those businesses are open, and we'll make every effort, you know, to get you inside. Well, the old clock on the wall, gentlemen. Our time to wind up our very interesting conversation. As you may know, I've had the opportunity of introducing you to the editor of the Hometown Weekly, introducing you to Richard DeSorga, which he's actually, as far as a lot of people are concerned, no introduction because of all the work that he has done. So in closing, as I normally do, because I find that uh, a lot of things become interesting, so any final words that you may have, Richard, and also, one for Josh. We'll Not start with you, Josh. <laughs> okay. No, I, uh, you know, as we say, you know, every uh, every time that we come in, you know, I'd appreciate uh, the opportunity to to be able to get on Medfield TV and and 
speak with you and, and the selectmen. Uh, so you know, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to, to come down here for the, for the show. And also, I may compliment you from Netfield TV and also people that have talked to me. You do a fine job oh, at thank Hometown you. Weekly Appreciate that. as the editor. The articles are beautifully well read and well written. Thank you. Appreciate that. Richard? Uh, uh, just a couple things that just to blow it uh, real quick. Uh, Medfield now is an official tree city, USA. Uh, we'll give you more information on to that. Um, we're working uh, with the MBTA uh, to remove the railroad tracks <coughs> on uh, uh, Farm Street and possible Harding Street. We're looking for Chief Meany's input on that to make a smoother ride uh, to go on those streets. Um, Route 27, we had a proposal from NSTAR, uh, which they did over in um, Hartford Street in Dover. Uh, they will pay for shrubbery and stuff to go along. Because uh, right now, the, with the high tension lines cross Route 27, it looks terrible mm -hmm. as you look through. Um, <coughs> they will put uh, some uh, landscaping uh, in there. If we agree, we will then take care of them and maintain them. We discussed that at the selectmen's meeting last night. Uh, so we'll try to dress uh, that area up. Uh, we're looking at uh, the possibility. Uh, we have a number of businesses on Park Street. Uh, people don't know they're there. As you go down. Route 109, especially if you're out of town, you don't know that we have uh, pizza places and yogurt and uh, dry cleaners and all kinds of businesses down there. Some type of signage that we can uh, work with our sign committee in town to see if there's something we can do because we want to make sure those businesses survive and do well. They're good for the, uh, the tax uh, situation here in Medfield and we want to make sure that um, th those businesses do well. So we're looking at that. Uh, Columbia Gas has promised us, and, and we're after them this spring, that they will repave um, Adam Street. They dug it all up, and the trench is now like a swale uh, from uh, uh, West Street down to West Mill Street. So that should be coming up. Um, and the Cushman House, uh, which is on the Montrose property, we've had a number of concerns that window has been broken and the property seems to uh, be in uh, deteriorating condition. Uh, we've met with the folks at Montrose. They have no intention of uh, deteriorating that down. They're working on a, uh, a huge uh, athletic and uh, uh, fine arts center right now, but they hope to be able to use that as a conference area, and they do have plans to restore that and save that building, so that's good news as well. So there's just a couple of other small things coming up. And again, I thank you again for the opportunity to give us a chance to connect town hall to the people uh, in Medfield and Josh as well um, of using the newspapers and other avenue uh, to let the people in Medfield know what's going on in town hall. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. John, Thank you. Richard, John. Thank you. One more thing before we say good night. I've had people say this to me in the most important factor. Attend your selectmen meetings. There's a lot of information the situations at a selectman meeting, a lot of questions that you may have. As you may know, we at Medfield TV film the selectman meeting. But if you were there, you may have a question. And the reason for that, I say this. I had a couple of nice people say, well, gee, I, I had some questions, but I didn't make it. Try to make your selectman meeting. And there you are. You want to give me the date? Sure. Um, they are the, the first, the third, and the fourth Tuesdays of every month. Uh, we added the fourth Tuesdays. It used to be just the first and the third uh, from September until May. So we go on a summer schedule in uh, June, July, and August. It would be the first and third uh, Tuesdays of the month. The other thing, if anyone is interested, if they can't make a selectmen's meeting, um, I have a blog that they can put a question in and I'll refer, uh, I'll respond to them. They can just Google uh, DeSaga selectmen uh, and they can put their question in or then give me a, a call on the phone. Very, very helpful. Well, once again, gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time and also just your effort and Richard, Definitely all your effort that you, you put forth at the selectman meeting. Thank well, you gentlemen, thanks. thank you once again. 
This is Jack Peterson wishing you and yours the very best. Good night. This program was made possible through the generous support of your Medfield friends and neighbors, folks just like you. And thanks for watching.